Hello everyone. Today we group 6 are here to present to you about our COA topic that is bus arbitration in computer organization. In computer system multiple devices such as CPU memory and IO controllers are connected to the common communication pathway known as a bus. In order to transfer data between these devices they need to have access to the bus. Bus arbitration is the process of resolving conflicts that arise when multiple devices attempt to access the bus at the same time. When multiple devices try to use the bus simultaneously it can lead to data corruption and system instability to prevent this a bus arbitration mechanism is used to ensure that only one device has access to the bus at the given point of time there are several types of bus arbitration methods including centralized and distributive arbitration in centralized arbitration a single device known as the bus controller is responsible for managing access to the bus In distribution arbitration devices compete for the access of the bus by sending a request signal and waiting for the grant signal bus arbitration refers to the process by which the current bus master assesses and then leaves the control to the bus and passes it to another bus requesting power control the controller that has access to the bus at an instant is known as a bus master master a conflict may arise if the number of the dma controllers or the other controllers or the processors try to assess the bus Uh, in a on same time but access can only be granted to one of those only one processor control can be bus a uh, master at the given point of time to resolve these conflicts the bus arbitration procedure is implemented to correspond the activities of all devices requesting memory transfer there are two approaches to the bus arbitration centralized bus arbitration a single bus arbiter performs the required arbitration distributed bus arbitration all devices participating in the selection of next bus master methods of centralized bus arbitration there are three bus arbitration methods first daisy chaining method it is a simple and cheaper method where all the bus masters use the same line for making the bus requests the bus grant signal serially propagates through the each master until it encounters the first one that is requesting access to the bus next master blocks the propagation of the bus grant signal therefore any other requesting module will not receive the grant signal and hence cannot access the bus during any bus cycle the bus master may be any device the processor or any dma controller unit connected to the bus there are some advantages of daisy chaining method first simplicity and its scalability second the user can add more devices anywhere along the chain up to a certain maximum value disadvantages disadvantage of daisy chaining method is that the value of priority assigned to a device depends on the position of master bus propagation delay arises in this method and the last one is if one device fails then the entire system will stop working polling or rotating priority method in this the controller is used to generate the address for the master unique priority the number of address lines required depends on the number of masters connected in the system the controller generates a sequence of master addresses when the requesting master recognizes its address it activates the busy line and begins to use the bus advantages the method does not favor any particular device or processor and the method is also quite simple disadvantages adding bus masters is difficult as increases the number of address lines of the circuit if one device fails then the entire system will not stop working fixed priority scheduling is a scheduling method used in real time systems where tasks have strict deadlines each task is assigned a priority value based on its importance or date the task with the highest priority is executed first and the execution continues until all tasks are completed This method ensures that high priority tasks are executed within their deadline and that the system meets the required response time. One of the key benefits of fixed priority scheduling is that it provides predictable performance. The system can be designed and analyzed using mathematical models which can help ensure that all tasks meet their deadlines. Fixed priority scheduling is widely used in many real time systems including aerospace, medical and industrial control systems. However, Fixed priority scheduling also has some drawbacks. One of the main disadvantage is that lower priority tasks may experience starvation if they never get chance to execute. If high priority tasks keep arriving, low priority tasks may never get a chance to execute, which can impact the overall performance of the system. On the other hand, independent request scheduling is a method where all tasks 
are considered equal and each task is executed in turn. In order of execution is not based on any priority value but instead the tasks are executed in the order of they are received. This method ensures that every task gets a chance to execute and no task is left waiting for an extended period. Independent request scheduling is commonly used in systems such as servers and desktop applications. One of the main benefits of independent request scheduling is that it provides fairness in the execution of tasks. All tasks are given an equal opportunity to execute and no task is given priority over another. This can be especially important in the systems where multiple users are competing for resources. However, independent request scheduling may not be suitable for real-time systems where response time is critical. This is because the order of execution is not based on the any priority value and tasks may be executed in the order that does not meet their deadline. Distributed bus arbitration In distributed bus arbitration, every device takes part in choosing the new bus master. Here, each device on the bus has an equal chance of being granted access to the bus based on the predetermined priority scheme. When a device wants to assist the bus, it checks to see if the bus is currently in use. If it is not, the device can immediately assist the bus. If the bus is in use, the device waits for a random time before trying again. A 4-bit identification number is allocated to each device on the bus. The created ID will decide the device priority. This method helps to reduce the chances of collision and improves the overall efficiency of the bus. Bus arbitration is a critical computer process in computer organization that has several uses and benefits including efficient use of uh, system resources. By regulating access to the bus, bus arbitration ensures that each device has fair access to system resources, preventing any signal device from monopolizing the bus and causing system slowdown or crashes, minimizing data corruption. Bus arbitration helps uh, prevent data corruption by ensuring that only one device has access to the bus at a time, which minimizes risks of multiple devices writing to the same location in a memory simultaneously. Support of uh, multiple devices Bus arbitration ensures multiple devices uh, to share a common communication pathway which is essential for modern computer systems with multiple peripherals such as printer, scanner and external storage devices. Real-time system support in real-time system, bus arbitration is essential to ensure that high-priority tasks are executed quickly and efficiently. By prioritizing access to the bus, bus arbitration can ensure that critical tasks are given uh, the resource they need to execute in a timely manner. Improved system stability By preventing conflict between devices, bus arbitration helps to improve system stability and reliability. This is especially important in mission-critical systems where downtime or data corruption could have severe consequences.